morning students welcome to the virtual classroom in our last lecture we have seen some certain numericals based on the equilibrium constant today we will be going through the next topic and that is related to the factors that are affecting to the equilibrium constant factors that affects equilibrium the factors that affects the equilibrium now which are those factors the factors are like temperature pressure concentration they affect the equilibrium at the same time equilibrium is not affected not affected but time required to reach equilibrium is reduced by catalyst right so we want to understand what are this what is the effect of this factors as an external factors to the equilibrium this was very first time studied by the scientist named lee chatelier and that's the reason why the principle was developed for the factors affecting to it were known as lee according to lee chatelier's principle so what was that principle he told it that whenever any external factors that effects are changed the effects are changed during the reaction then the reaction will attain the equilibrium in such a way that those change are minimized what is the principle indicates the chemical principle indicates that when any external factors are changed then during the reaction then the equilibrium gets disturbed and the new equilibrium is established in such a way that the reaction will establish the new equilibrium so that the whatever the change is done during the reaction it's been minimized if you would have increased the temperature it will proceed in such a way that it will reduce the temperature if you decrease the temperature it will increase it if you try to change the concentration like if you decrease the concentration it will increase the concentration of the reaction right at the same time this will also help me to know it whether the reaction will proceed in the forward direction or in the reverse direction so to predict it also this principle is going to be helpful now let us see how these factors are going to be affected 
in each by taking it as an example of the different reactions and you have to understand or even the question will be asked to you that in the given reaction if concentration of the component is reduced or concentration is increased or temperature is increased or reduced or pressure how will you recognize that whether the reaction will proceed in the forward or reverse direction so for that case let's take it as the first one we'll take it as temperature the effect of temperature now when you are going in for the effect of the temperature you will have to recognize that whether the given reaction is endothermic or exothermic the very first thing is we the reaction should be known to us whether it's an endothermic or exothermic here heat is absorbed what we will get it it is absorbed in an exothermic that means in the reaction it is added that is delta h is positive the value of the delta h will be positive for the exothermic it is That means in the reaction it is evolved. Delta H will be negative. For such reaction, the delta H will be negative. Now, in that case, for example, CaCO3. When it is heated, when it is heated, it gets converted into CaO plus CO2. That means I can say that this reaction is endothermic. The reaction is endothermic. Now, when the reaction is endothermic, what will happen? Heat is being taken away. Now the question arises. In this reaction, if temperature is increased, now in this reaction I am increasing the temperature. Now what happens? See already it needs the temperature and by utilizing the temperature, by utilizing the heat, it is getting converted into CaO and CO2. Right? And if I provide the temperature, what will happen? It will utilize it. It will try to reduce the temperature. So it will proceed in the forward direction. So this shows that it is by increasing the temperature, reaction by doing so it will proceed in the forward direction but in place of that if you say that in place of increase it will like decrease the temperature so it already needs the temperature and still if you take away the temperature from here from the component if you take away the temperature what will happen will it get converted into CO CO2 no in the presence of temperature it is getting converted into CaO and CO2 so in the absence it is not going to get converted into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide so what will happen it will proceed for reverse so by decreasing the temperature reverse reaction takes place right so in common for endothermic reaction for this you can say for endothermic reaction increase in temperature will go for forward reaction for decrease in temperature 
what do we take it for? Reverse reaction. Right? So, it depends upon the reaction whether it is an endothermic or exothermic. Right? Now, in place of that, let us take it as an exothermic. N2, 3H2, 2NS3, plus heat is evolved. Heat is given out. So, what does it show? Energy is released. Already the temperature of this component is going to increase more and more. And in that condition, if I say that by increasing the temperature, what will happen? So, if I increase the temperature over here, already the temperature is high. Plus again the rise in the temperature. So, reaction will try to go for reverse. So, for endothermic, increase in temperature. For endothermic, what does it shows? Increase in temperature, the reaction will go for reverse reaction. Decrease in temperature will be for forward reaction and will try to minimize that effect according to the Nietzsche-Tilia principle. So, for the effect of the temperature, you have to be careful whether it is an endothermic or exothermic. If it is an endothermic, increase in temperature will take the reaction for forward direction and decrease in temperature will take the reaction for reverse direction. Similarly, for the exothermic, increase in the temperature will take the reaction for the reverse direction and decrease in the temperature takes the reaction for forward direction. Right? So, that was the effect of temperature. Now let us go in for the next one, effect of concentration. The second term. Effect of concentration. Now, in this case, we do not have any partitions. Concentration means we can have it, we do not have it like temperature, endothermic, exothermic, we do not have any it is a one and the same. N2, 3H2, 2NS3. Right? I will write up this reaction. And in that case, here, if we say that if concentration of N2 or H2 is increased, then what will happen? If N2 or H2 is increased, then what will happen? The reaction will proceed for forward direction. It will try to reduce the reactant. If you are saying it that if concentration of NS3 is increased, it will go for reverse direction. Right? Though in the case I am putting it as an increase, in both the cases I have put it as an increase. But still one is going for forward, one is going for reverse. So from this, what it can be said, if the concentration of the reactant is increased, reaction will proceed for forward direction. If the concentration of product is increased, reaction will proceed for reverse. So in general. Increasing concentration of reactant reaction will go in forward direction. Right? And Concentration of reactant 
is decreased. That means if I take it for this reaction, reaction this value is decreased. If these things are removed from the container where the reaction is proceeding, what will happen? It will try to produce that component because they are removed. So it wants to increase that component. So during that case, what happens? By decreasing the concentration of the reactant, reverse. Reaction takes place. And decrease the concentration of product.
see again I am turning it for the pressure, the effect of the pressure I won't be able to see that every time reducing the pressure will make the reaction to proceed in the forward direction the reason is if I take it as a second example so these components are in the gas state all of them are in the gas state if I reduce the pressure in this reaction what will happen? All the three components are going to be affected. And if I want to reduce the pressure in all the three components, that will reduce the pressure of the container. During that case, maximum effect will be on the three reactants. Here, maximum effect will be on the reactants. More the reactants are there, less is the product. So more pressure reduced will be for the reactant, so reaction will go for reverse. So in this case, if pressure is reduced, reaction is in reverse direction. For this, forward direction though the condition is same though the statement for both of these are same your answer for them are different and that depends on the gases component right so you have to be careful you have to first of all identify whether the given reaction what is are the number of the components present in it and what are the physical states of this component? General, to generalize this particular type of reaction or to generalize the effect of the pressure, we can calculate it on the basis of delta and change the number of moles of the gases component. We know it in the thermodynamics, we have already studied it. Nv minus and our number of moles of product minus reactant will give me the gases component. Now in this case, if Delta N is greater, means we can say that greater than zero, positive. Delta N is positive. That means the product will be more. The number of the moles of the gases component in the product are more. So if delta N is greater than zero, then I can put the condition for it in the generalized form that if delta N is greater than zero. Increasing, I will write it here. If delta n is greater than zero, increasing pressure of the reaction, not particularly the agent or not particularly product, it's generalized whole reaction. Specifically, when you are doing it, you will have to go for the answer as a concentration, right? Because specifically, when I am taking, talking about only NS3, or I am talking about only H2, or I am talking about only N2, then what will happen? I will have to consider its concentration, right? When we are talking it in the reaction, generalized, then only we can apply this. Okay, otherwise individual we will have to go it according to the concentration. Now if delta is greater than zero, increasing the pressure of the reaction takes reaction in reverse direction. And decreasing pressure of reaction, reaction Moving reverse direction. Right? Similarly, if delta n is less than zero, then what will happen? Vice versa. Increasing pressure forward. Decreasing pressure
reverse reaction will take place. Okay, so it depends upon the number of moles of the gaseous component present in the given solution. And the fourth factor that we told it that was the catalyst. Actually, by any catalyst, the reaction is not effective at all. Its equilibrium is not effective. Equilibrium remains same.